Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic, the base entertainment, and where we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And in today's episode, I got a pretty interesting one for you. And the topic is, did Carmelo Anthony take a shot at the entire NBA with his comments? So that's the topic I want to get into in today's video. But before we get into that, I want you guys to please make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we drop our content. So we all know that the NBA season is right around the corner. I was just discussing discussing this yesterday with Marco, the co-founder of Dreamers Pro. We're just discussing it, discussing the fact that starting training camp is about to start in two weeks, and we're pretty excited. Now, obviously, we're going to be moving. I'm uh, Dreamers Pro. We're going to be changing our background. Finally, I'm going to be moving, and uh, we're going to have a different setup, so there may be a little bit of a transition period for the last about four or five days, so bear with us, but we're going to have a different setup going into this next season and into the, into the future uh, of Dreamers Pro, so we're pretty excited about some of the things that are, that, uh, that are happening, and there are a lot of interesting storylines out there that are kind of percolating. Uh, you know, uh, you know, going into this season. And one of them, of course, is that of the Lakers, right? Because, of course, the Lakers are always going to be, you know, one of the major storylines. They're, they're probably the most successful team in the, in, in, the, uh, in the NBA as far. Well, they're tied with, I think, the Boston Celtics with championships. But they're one of the most valuable sports franchises in the world. I, I think they're the number two most valuable sports franchise in, 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 the, in the NBA behind the New York Knicks. So the Lakers are a pretty big deal. And they're always going to be in headlines, given the fact that they just won another championship just two seasons ago so the lakers always a big deal um last season i thought in the western conference i thought the two best teams in the west were the lakers and the clippers this is what i thought i always said that these are the two best teams uh you know in the you know um in the you know in the western conference um since the playoffs the lakers have done an overhaul of their roster and they did some things that i really didn't quite agree with but because i thought they had a really solid team but obviously they lost some key contributors but they added a plethora of talent to their to their roster this season you're talking about players like russell westbrook dwight howard uh trevor reza deandre jordan rajon rondo kent Bazemore. And obviously, Carmelo Anthony, I think he, no, 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 uh, Carmelo Anthony came and then DeAndre Jordan came. No, no, it was Carmelo Anthony, uh, Rajon Rondo, then I think DeAndre Jordan. I think that's the, that's the order in which those last people came, uh, those last players came in. And I think the majority of those ad ad additions are good ones. I, I really think they are, right? I think they're good, with the exception of Russell Westbrook. Now, I'm not taking a shot at Russell Westbrook at all, but I do have some questions uh, about him. I think if age wasn't a factor, I think they have a very, 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 very good roster. If age wasn't a factor, obviously you have to factor in age, right? It's like uh, you got to, because uh, if, if you're living in reality, you have to, you have to do that. I just think that the addition of Russell Westbrook um, is going to present some challenges to their roster. This is this is truthfully what I think because Russell Westbrook, he's going to help you with the playmaking. He's going to help you with pushing the ball in transition, getting some easy opportunities in transition. Maybe the the Lakers want to get some easy opportunities, you know, to speed up the tempo of the game. Maybe that's some of the things that they're looking at. But I do know that the Lakers last season were ranked they were the number twenty first ranked team in the NBA in three point shooting percentage. Right, that that's an issue. Especially in the NBA where teams are attempting over 33s a game. I think the Lakers were making about 11.2 or something like that. Roughly 11 three-pointers per game last season. And I just don't see how Russell Westbrook helps you improve that. Now, some people say, hey, wait a minute. They've added some shooters. Ken Bazemore, Carmelo Anthony, Trevor Reza. Yes, we understand that. But we also got to look at their starting lineup. Who's going to be in their starting lineup, right? Because if you're starting Russell Westbrook, I don't know. Maybe you're going to start Trevor Reza at the two, probably. I don't know. Then you have LeBron James. Anthony Davis, who's going to start at your center? Is it going to be DeAndre Jordan? They just got rid of Marcus Saul. Is it going to be Dwight Howard? So the Lakers are still, I believe, going to have some spacing issues, right? And I think there are going to be some issues there and challenges that they need to work through, but they have a lot of smart guys on that roster, which brings me to the comments that Carmelo Anthony just recently made. And Carmelo Anthony was recently on Stephen A. Smith's show on uh, ESPN, and he has some pretty interesting things to say about his new... Um, situation there with the Lakers. So before I go too far, I want you guys to take a listen to some of the comments that Carmelo Anthony made. This is a short, just a short clip. Take a listen to some of the things that he had to say uh, during that interview. How are you feeling about being a member of the Los Angeles Lakers, even with everybody saying that y'all are the oldest team in the league? Because y'all are. Well, we, I mean, that's a fact. Ain't nobody saying nothing that's not a fact. We, we are. We old as hell, Steve. We, you, you know that in, in basketball sense. But I, I just think that what we all bring to the table is is a wisdom that a lot of people don't have. Like the way that we're able to, that we're going to be able to come together, hold each other, hold each other accountable, 
uh, have each other backs. You know, we we have we have the most knowledge on this one team than the whole NBA have. I I I think so. If we can't put that together and make something work, then that that's on us. That's that's not on nobody else. And that's that's something that you know that I'm looking forward to. We all talk about it. We all discussed it. We know what's at stake. We're gonna have fun with this journey. We're gonna enjoy this this journey. We're gonna embrace it. And I'm I'm excited to do it, man. Because before, if I if I had if I was just to walk away from the game before, then I'd I'd have been at peace with that. I'd have been cool with that, knowing that you know I I I tried to win a championship. It just don't work out for everybody. But now that perspective is totally different. Now I have to win. There there's no if ands or buts about that. So I know what that does. I know the pressure that that put on 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 us as a team as, as an organization. But what other pressure did? You want what other person we want. We want to go out there. We want to target an all back. Now, in that clip, I thought Carmelo Anthony was being straightforward. I, th I thought he was being forthright. He openly admitted that the Lakers are old as hell. I obviously he said it in jest, but he's also he's also being like he's he's being truthful. Like they are they are old. But you know the the most the most interesting thing I thought he said in that soundbite is what he said towards the end, where he said. We on our team, we have the uh, he said, our collective bat, our again, our collective basketball IQ is more than that of the entire league combined. We have is basically the smarts on our team are greater than the entire NBA combined. And I was like, whoa, 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 this is what we're doing right now. Is this what we do? We're gonna start off the season this way. Now, obviously, Carmelo Anthony ain't afraid of nobody. Uh, he's gonna tell it like he sees it. He he has a lot of he has su supreme confidence in his basketball abilities. So I don't think like he's a scared like oh this guy's gonna come at me but whatever it is. Obviously he's a bit he's 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 on the tail end of his career, but a, a prime Carmelo Anthony can go toe to toe with pretty much anyone on a basketball court. But um, I think a lot of teams are gonna take some notice of that. And listen, he makes a good point if he's talking about LeBron James and Rajon Rondo, right? Those two guys are basketball savants. This has been publicly documented on numerous occasions that these two guys are very you know they're they think the game at an extremely elite level this is something we already know but i wouldn't put russell westbrook on that list i'm not sure if i would put russ westbrook on that list i'm not sure if i'll do that carmelo's my man he's a, you know he's a are we gonna put carmelo anthony on that i mean carmelo's a you know he's an offensive wizard but we're gonna put him on one of the you know highest basketball are we gonna do that not sure about that if I'm if I'm willing to do that. And last time I checked, the NBA has some pretty smart guys out there, some pretty smart dudes. You're talking about Kevin Durant, Kawhi Leonard, James Harden. You know, there are a lot of smart guys out there. And are we forgetting the trio in Golden State? Stephen Curry, Klay Thompson, and Draymond Green. They have them some pretty smart cats over there. Oh, is this what we're saying? So I definitely think that the league is going to use some of these comments as bulletin board uh, material. Obviously, I think the Lakers, um, I think the Lakers are expecting a lot of challengers to come at them this season because listen, they put a compilation. If you remove their ages, they just put together an all-star team. Like if I mean, we haven't done it yet, we'll probably do it a little bit later in the season. If we do a compilation uh, like an amalgamation of the total all-star appearances on this team, it got to be something in the 25, 30s, total all-star appearances. Like, it must be something crazy. If you're talking about Dwight Howard, DeAndre Jordan, LeBron James, Rajon Rondo, Carmelo Anthony, Anthony Davis, like, they must probably have over 30 all-star appearances together on that team, right? That's an extremely, extremely talented team. You just got to you know omit the fact that they're an older team and i think a lot of teams are going to take notice of some of the comments that they said i definitely think the brooklyn nets are going to take uh you know um take inventory of some of the comments that they made now a lot of people feel like as if this laker team is going to blow the doors off and of everyone and all of these different things listen i still think that the brooklyn nets are the best team in the nba i think they're the most lethal that they're they they have by far the most the most lethal offensive lineup in probably in the modern era probably in nba history Right. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. If you think you're going to beat that Brooklyn Nets team playing defense, good the hell luck. They had two players last season. Kyrie Irving had a 50 40 90 season. season. Kevin Durant damn near had a 50 40 90 season coming off an Achilles tear or Achilles rupture, whatever it is. And then you have James Harden, who led the league in scoring, I think, averaged 36 points per game uh, one or a few years ago. 
Y'all going to stop that team playing defense? It will never happen. Ever, ever, never, ever. Because Kevin Durant gets to play one-on-one. -on -one. Kyrie Irving gets to play one-on-one. -on -one. James Harden, you got three dudes that can legitimately hit you up with a 50-piece on any given night. And if you think you're stopping that team defensively, good luck. There is no defense for that team. There is none. There is none. You got to be able to make shots against that Brooklyn Nets team. So I, I think a lot of people have the Lakers in the Western Conference. I mean, having them represent the Western Conference in the finals, you will have to see how that all plays out. But if they do get to the finals and they're facing the Brooklyn Nets, trust me, your basketball IQ is not what you're going to need. You're going to need some shooters and you're going to need to be able to put the, ba the ball in the bucket, right? Because there's no way. The Brooklyn Nets have a trio in which, right? Usually what happens in the NBA is that you have a duo, right? And on a duo, you know, it's 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 amazing when you have both of those guys go off at the same time. Like if you think of Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, I've seen both of these guys have 40 plus point games, you know, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, unison together. But it's rare when you have a situation in which you have a, a trio of stars where one of them is off and you still have another two guys that you got to deal with. that can hit you up with 40 points each. That's something that no other team in the NBA has. None, none, no other team. Not the Lakers, not the Clippers. Nobody has something like that, right? The Brooklyn Nets do. So even if you're playing against them in a series, what, what, so what's your bet? What's your bet? What are you betting on? Okay, you're going to take away Kyrie and leave James Harden and Kevin Durant. What are you going to do? Take away Kevin Durant and leave James Harden and Kyrie. What are you going to do? And this is something that we can't we can't get around this reality, right? I just think that they have an offense that's just, it's, it's quite frankly, it's scary. I saw the Clippers play against them, uh, I think, in their first meeting. They played them perfectly for about 47 or 46 and a half minutes. Then in the last minute and a half, they came, the, the big three came down and hit seven, I think, seven straight field goals, and it was over. Kyrie Irving comes down, hits a pull-up three. James Harden, I mean, it was over. There's nothing you can do. So you have to, uh, you have to play, you have to have a, a virtually a perfect series against that team to beat them, and you have to score. You got to score. You saw the Clippers versus the Utah Jazz. A lot of the times what kept the Clippers in those games was their scoring of Reggie Jackson, Nicholas Batum, you know, Marcus Moore Sr., Paul George. You got to be able to make shots. And in this NBA, you got to be able to make some threes. But I think Carmelo Anthony and these guys are fully aware of this, and I think they're accepting all challengers. So, But for me, I think he took a shot at the entire league, and I think the entire league took notice of his comments, and I think we're going to have an interesting start of this season, and I can't wait. So... What I want to know from you guys is, what do you think about his comments? What do you think about the Lakers' chances? And let me know just how excited you are about the basketball season about to start in a, uh, in a few weeks. Whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. Again, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we drop our content. Once again, this is Charles here from Dreamers Pro. Wishing you guys an amazing day and catch you guys on the next episode. Peace.